Hello, I'm Dr. Simon Hull, a Senior Lecturer at the University of Cape Town's Division of Geomatics, and welcome to the video series, An Introduction to Land Administration. I'm joined by Chepo Fokani, a researcher at the Alliance for Rural Democracy, known better as ARD, and Dr. Rosalie Kingwell, an independent research consultant and associate researcher at the University of the Western Cape's Institute for Poverty, Land and Agrarian Studies, better known as PLAS. We've recorded this video, uh, the videos in this series for LandNest, which is the Land Network National Engagement Strategy uh, from Null Spreit, uh, where, where Chepo is, and here in Cape Town, South Africa, where Rosalie and I are uh, via Zoom under COVID-induced lockdown restrictions. Thanks, Simon. This video series designed to introduce the basic context, concept, and components of land administration. The content should be of interest to practitioners and students interested in the governance aspect of land-related issues. For example, the governance of land rights, land tenure, spatial planning, land use and environmental management, valuation and land information, or land data systems. Through this series, we highlight the importance of the interaction between all these elements. Yeah, all countries require coherent land governance and land administration to manage a sustainable life on earth. That is the interaction among humans and between humans and the natural and built environment. In countries like South Africa, where land reform is a burning and critical issue, land administration has an added urgency. Land reform programs have little chance of success if land administration is weak or is incoherent and fragmented. This series is designed as an introduction to land administration. It aims mainly to make land administration concepts more intelligible to help students grasp the basic concepts. There are sometimes multiple or even differing definitions of concepts that we've used, and we have chosen to go with the most comprehensive definitions. And we stress that sometimes these definitions change according to context. Context always matters in land administration. We've grouped several videos into thematic sessions, each with an overview at the beginning and a summary at the end. In the first session, which is videos one to four and includes this one, we introduce the basic concepts and position land administration in a bigger framework. In the second session, which is videos five to seven, we show how land administration works as a system of parts. In the third session, which is videos eight to 13, we look at the role of land governance and land information in land administration systems. We also discuss land tenure, land rights, land tenure security, and the continuum of land rights. The final session is videos 14 to 17, where we look at tools and approaches for ensuring effective land administration such as the fit for purpose approach to land administration. And we also conclude the series in that session. So let's turn to the, the next video, the start of the series, where we discuss the question, what is land administration? And we introduce the basic concepts, definitions and structuring of land administration using broad brushstrokes. We do not at this stage go into the detail of the various components of land administration, nor at this stage, the South African context. We look at the multidimensional aspects of land and why there's a need for institutions to moderate and mediate the multiple demands on land. For example, the increasing competition for and stress on land, the different normative and economic values associated with land, contested claims to specific land on the basis of past dispossession, competing systems of authority, competing or contested systems for distributing or allocating land, and threats to sustainable human interaction with the environment, which has caused the climate crisis and which now threatens to diminish the productivity and habitability of some land. Thanks, Rosalie. Land-related institutions come into being 
to moderate and mediate these multiple tensions. By moderate, we mean review and regulate. And by mediate, we mean to intervene in a dispute in order to bring about an agreement or reconciliation. These institutions must work in tandem to develop coherent policies, laws, and strategies to manage the tensions in a way that society accepts. If the broad society does not accept them, people may avoid or even subvert them. Land governing institutions must also develop the means of implementing them. It is the latter operational dimension that we call land administration. So we hope you'll join us for the next videos where we discuss what land administration means, why it's important, and how people understand land.